All right, on this episode of the Church Photographers Podcast, winter is here in North Carolina, and so we have holed up in our office to come up with an entire year of church photography team training events for you. We've got 15 workshop ideas for equipping your church photography team. We'll give you all the ideas, we'll give you the uh, topics to cover, and we'll give you the tips for execution, all here in just a moment. But first, I'm Rob Lauder. I'm Connor Strickland. And this this is is the the Church Church Photographers Photographers Podcast. Podcast. All right, man, so wild ride over the past week, huh? <laughs> You're not kidding. It was a whirlwind. Yeah, we just got back from the Church Photographer Summit, which yep. if you tuned in, you saw seven hours of content online. You were one of 4,000 people <laughs> that turned tuned in throughout the day. We went down to Atlanta, Georgia to host an entire free streaming online training event with our buddy Justin Dean from Sunday U. Yeah. Uh, it was a whirlwind, man. It, it, was, was. it was incredible, too, because we had so much discussion, like 800 comments going yeah. on in the comments section. Um, we had 16 speakers, great time. Uh, it's not too late to pick up a replay it's pass not. either. So if you want to jump onto summit.churchphotographers.com, got a couple days uh, left if you want to grab mm-hmm. that material. It's uh, 129 bucks and get seven hours of training well worth uh, it. for you and for your photography team. Yep. Um, but hey, we've got some free training now. We do. And it's kind of like a, it's a meta. It's like we're talking about training on training. Yeah. Right? Uh, the topic that we're going into today is 15 photography team workshop ideas. This is uh, more for the leaders in the room. Mm-hmm. But this is, uh, you know, I know as a photography team leader that I need to be training my team. Yeah. Need to equip them, need to give them all the training I can, look for deficiencies, find ways for them to grow and facilitate that growth. And I do that with workshops. Mm-hmm. Every other month I hold a workshop at our church and I, uh, I pick a topic and I roll with it. So these topics, some of them are going to be topics that I have actually uh, led uh, workshops on. Some are just ideas I had in the queue. And so we're going to go into each one of these, talk about how to execute them, what topics to cover. Uh, but first, got to hear from some friends of ours. Yep. All right. So here we are, 15 photography team workshop ideas. Number one, we're just going to run through these. Let's and, do it. You know, take notes, but we're also going to ha- release uh, a free PDF with all the stuff in it too. So don't take notes. Uh, just listen along, <laughs> especially if you're driving. Yeah, right, please don't take notes if you're driving. 15 photography team workshop ideas. Number one, DSLR fundamentals. This is, I think, number the, the number one request that I get from our photographers mm-hmm. is like, I've got my gear. How do I work it? Yeah. Um, obviously, there's going to be people in the room who know how to work <laughs> their gear, but there's also going to be beginners. And so some topics to cover here, are just like basic gear, like what, what, what does different type of gear do? What's the mm-hmm. difference between Nikon and Sony and Canon and all those other things? We'll have an episode coming out on that soon. We do, and an entire gear guide for yep. how to purchase that gear as well. Um, but then also just like, you know, light in general, like photography is the capture of light. I think a lot of newbies just don't understand that principle. Yeah. Now uh, go over exposure triangle, shutter speed, ISO, aperture, and how they work together. Maybe go into some post-processing mm-hmm. basics as well. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, what are some tips for execution on this one though? Yeah. So one, invite your team to bring their gear, the gear, like oh. they need to be learning on the gear that they're going to be actually using. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a big one. And then also let the experts teach the, the beginners. Mm-hmm. So you have people, like you said, who are going to know how to use their gear. Ask them to come into that with you to help to help teach the new people. Indeed. Like, I never want to position myself as the know-it-all nope. in the yep. room because there are people on my team who know more about <laughs> photography than I do. And so I want to platform them and yep. leverage them. And especially if you have multiple bodies or different brands out there, you're a Nikon guy. However, mm-hmm. something's going to be slightly different. So if there's someone who solely shoots on a Sony or Canon, maybe they can help another beginner that has that same body. Yeah, we just had a, a funny little cross-brand moment here <laughs> as we were setting up for this podcast. Uh, you know, I, I shoot Nikon, Connor shoots Sony and, and Canon. <laughs> and Nikon, the lenses come off and the lens caps come off backwards. And so he spent about 30 <laughs> seconds trying to figure out how to get it off. And it's like, oh, yeah, Nikon, we're weird. It's supposed to be um, Lefty Lucy, but I yeah. guess Nikon's the only people that do no, Righty Lucy. That's, uh, that's how, and that's why you need more people in the room (laughs) yeah all right diversity of opinion in in church photography we love that uh workshop idea number two shooting in crummy light uh this is what actually the second workshop that i hosted for our team and man this is when i hosted this one our photography team just came to life um we went through you know some of the topics you can cover uh the color and quality and intensity of light you know hard light versus soft Mm -hmm. light warm light versus cool light um, your exposure triangle, white balance is a big one here. If yes. you are shooting in like dimly lit, poorly lit church environments, like you're going to have, you know, sometimes purple light on the stage. You're going to have orange light on the stage. It's going to be crazy. Um, teaching, 
your team how white balance works and how to white balance before a shoot mm -hmm. will get you so far in terms of the quality that you're getting out of your photographers. Yep. Um, and then post processing bad colors like um, I, I post on this all the time. Like I, I, I enjoy the challenge <laughs> of getting like terrible light, terrible color and pulling a, a usable image. Yep. Um, so go uh, check out our, um, we actually have a, a tutorial on our yeah. YouTube channel on that. Go check out that tutorial and see how to uh, pull out decent images out of bad colors. Uh, tips for execution on this one. Yeah, hold this workshop in your auditorium. Give them a light show. Throw the purples and the blues and the orange and the greens at them and let them practice and work on white balance, work on getting the shot. Um, just so that the first time they mm. have to encounter that isn't on a Sunday morning. Yeah, and what I did is for our team, I actually brought the lights all the way down except for like one little smidgen of green yep. light like uh, as a key light on the back of somebody's head. It's like, all right, shoot have fun. And figure <laughs> yeah. it out. Um, and some of them did and some of them didn't. After this session, though, we had one guy went out and just like, he, uh, like I, I demonstrated how to use a gray card mm -hmm. for a white balance and he went out and found the coolest little like fold up gray card. It's like, uh, you know, the, the giant the reflectors, massive one, right? yeah. Um, like it's the same principle, it just folds up and slips in your pocket. And now, that's awesome. I uh, had one of our staff members saying, "Like, man, your your photographers are legit." Like, he pulled out a great card, and before we started shooting, I'm like, "Yes." Yeah, everyone does that. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, workshop number three: composition basics. I mean, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. folks like they, they look down their lens, they have a dot in the center, and that's where they focus, and that's all they think about. Yep. So here, think about rule of thirds. Think about how to compose for wide, medium, tight shots. Think about like how those shots make you feel you know what what each type of shot communicates and also your focal length like mm -hmm. if you're gonna have a super long lens you're gonna feel as if you're far off from the subject if you have a wider angle lens you're gonna feel closer to the subject and yep. those affect your composition as well so just little basics little tips that you can teach your team uh, on composition uh, what are some tips for execution here yeah so have lots of example images that they can use that you can show them hey this is what we're looking for um, also give them the reason behind the photo. So we talked about on some other episodes. Hey, if you're going to be using an image as a hero banner on a website, okay, leave space for the text. Um, and being able to show, show them where the images are going to be used can really help them um, with a composition. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, workshop idea number four, dealing with people. Yeah. And I have a broad number of ideas in, in mind for this one. Um, but generally speaking, like, I find that a lot of photographers, not everybody, like some of like, you know, like wedding photographers, Love. they're like super into it and yep. like super personable. Um, our buddy, Jeremy Poland, who we've interviewed for this mm -hmm. podcast like on this the topic, most uh, this topic, indeed, the most personable guy I know. <laughs> he is. Well, let's be real, though. That's not all photographers. <laughs> yeah. and a lot of photographers feel really uncomfortable interacting yep. with people, myself included, when I first got started. Um, and so uh, this is like some topics you can cover here are like, how do you approach people and handle people in the lobby? Mm -hmm. Um, how do you approach people and handle people being respectful in the auditorium during worship? Yep. Um, if you need to do like headshots or portraits or something like that, how could you coach? How could you pose, mm -hmm. um, those tips to really help the photographer feel comfortable around the people that they're photographing. What do we have for some tips for execution here? Yeah, so give them lots of room to practice during your workshop to work with each other. Work with people on the team that they may not know. If you're a larger team, that's a little bit easier to be done. Mm. Um, but have them interact with people, pose people, get different f r emotion out of them. Mm. Only way you're going to learn is by practicing. Indeed. I actually just had a portrait shoot this weekend, and uh, uh, it was a younger musician, and his mom was along. Mm. She's like, you are so great at posing. I'm like, I'm just making it up as I go along, <laughs> yeah. and I'm glad it works <laughs> as <Yep>. we go. <laughs> Um, but so it, it, having that interaction with people, like she texted me afterwards. She's like, you were so great. And my wife joined as well. I was like, and Cassie was so great too. Um, and so that's kind of how she sounds. And I just pulled out that Wilkes <laughs> County with Kellen accent. Um, <laughs> but she was super sweet. And it was all because of the way that we interacted with people. Yep. So teaching your team how to interact with folks will, will go a long way in not just the quality of images that you get because people will respond differently, yeah. but also the experience that both the photographer and the, the person being photographed have yep. during your service. Definitely. All right, number five, post-production in Lightroom, et cetera. Um, some topics to cover here, you know, importing images mm -hmm. and, you know, how you can actually get the images into Lightroom or whatever tool you're using. Uh, basic edits. So here's how where you start. Like you start with um, your exposure, start with your contrast, start, yep. you know, the, the things in that, uh, the, that light tab in Lightroom. Uh, but then move to some advanced edits. So here's how we handle color grading. Here's how we handle uh, tone curves and, and whatnot. Um, presets, yep. when to use a preset, when not to use a preset, um, 
how they affect your image and mm-hmm. what they do. Uh, and then speaking of presets, we have a entire preset pack available on churchphotographers.com slash freebies with a video tutorial on how to use those. Yep. So go check that out for some inspiration. Um, then exporting images, like how what what resolution should we export mm-hmm. in? How do we export? How do we handle file naming? Yep. Et cetera. I just noticed Lightroom CC, one of my biggest complaints was that they didn't have file naming and export settings on export. They do now. Beautiful. So the new like update? New update. Awesome. Yep. And then finally, library management. Mm-hmm. Like literally just yesterday, I went through my uh, Lightroom catalog. I use Lightroom CC. I've got, I had 600 gigs of images in the cloud. I pared down 200 gigs of those <laughs> just because like, you know, I'll dump my card. I'll have five, 600 images, mm-hmm. but only keep, you know, 10% of those. Uh, why keep those in your library? Yep. Take all, take the, the ones that you don't want, get rid of them, save space, yep. library management, uh, and then catalogs, uh, uh, albums, folders, et cetera. How to organize. I think that goes a long way to uh, helping your photographers understand their library and, and make mm-hmm. the most of Lightroom. Tips for excuse. Yeah, we've got a couple on this one. Um, first, introduce some free alternatives. Not everyone that's going to be on your photo team has to use Lightroom. Mm-hmm. Even though that's who we use, is not. you don't have to pay for it. You don't have to use it. Free alternatives is great. Um, encourage them to bring their device to practice. So you're a mobile guy. You love using your iPad. I still do all my editing on a laptop. Encourage people to bring their devices so they can actually get hands-on practice um, during your workshop. Um, and then provide practice images. This is something that you do. You'll provide an image that looks almost entirely black, and you're like, see what you can pull from that. Thankfully, you shoot in RAW, so there's a ton of data to pull back from that. However, that is an awesome way to show them the power of, of post-processing. Indeed. All right, uh, workshop idea number six, the image critique or review. This was a really fun one that was actually requested by our photo team. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of the, the way that we structured this, the topics we covered were uh, we walked through um, how to give good constructive feedback ahead of time. <laughs> it's not just like, oh, that image is bad. bad. That's I awful. don't like that. <laughs> All right, well, that's not helpful. Um, we character them to say, hey, like, find something that you appreciate about the image mm-hmm. and then find something that can be improved about the image and say what specifically can be yep. pr- improved. So coach them on how to give that good constructive feedback beyond just likes and dislikes and then just have the team get feedback. Uh, we actually invited the team ahead of time yep. to uh, to provide three sample images. Uh, you know, just you know, take some time, think about it. You know, it, I coach them ahead of time that like you're gonna feel vulnerable, and that's mm-hmm. okay. That's where growth comes from. Yep. Um, but what are some other tips that you, that you can have for execution on this one? Yeah. So have them submit um, three images ahead of time. Um, always a great way. And then shuffle them. So it's not like, all right, these three photos are going to come from Bob. These three are going to come from Jane. Shuffle them so that it um, keeps them fresh, keeps the, the style a little bit different. Um, ask each photographer to give the story behind the photo. Hey, what were you capturing here? What was the goal? What were you after? Um, and then let the group critique. So like you say, you don't want to be a one-man band, know-it-all. Let the group talk, um, create collaboration, and also just help create that community. Indeed. All right. Workshop idea number seven, event photography workflow. So this is another one I've already done with our team. And basically, I wanted our team to be thinking through all the different steps they needed to do Mm -hmm. uh, for a shoot. Because it's not just show up with a camera, take pictures, and leave. There's a lot of preparation you need to do on the front end. Like, make sure your batteries are charged. Make sure your your cards are formatted, et cetera, through the delivery of the images. And so um, on this one... uh, when I did this, I made this a completely interactive session. Mm-hmm. It was uh, like I had my notes, but I wanted to ask the group, all right, like right, let's brainstorm. Let's walk through all yep. the steps. Where does the shoot start? Uh, does it start when you get to the venue or does it start earlier? Yep. Uh, and we came up with like a two-page list of that workflow mm-hmm. that at some point we're going to break out into a resource as well. Yep. Um, and so that was uh, tr- the event photography workflow. Cool, uh, cool workshop idea that we yep. tried. Um, and then number eight, uh, this is a uh, off the wall idea. Um, and about half of my team has expressed interest in this one. Mm-hmm. When we first launched our team, uh, I had like eight or nine different topics. And I said, rate these one through nine. Yep. And you know, tell me which ones you were most interested in. This one kind of fell in the middle because some of our volunteers are entrepreneurial and some yep. of our are hobbyists. Um, but this is the side hustle or business training. And so a lot of photographers out there, particularly your your volunteer base, um, are going to have some sort of side hustle. Yep. Camera gear is not cheap, no. right? And so <laughs> side hustles Something can, needs to pay for it. It can help fund your gear. Um, some topics you can cover here, uh, types of business structures, yep. um, revenue streams. So it's not just like go out, shoot portraits, give them the card, say go get these printed. 
Uh, you can er, you know, earn revenue from the portrait session. Mm-hmm. You can earn revenue from prints. You can earn revu- revenue from licensing images. So I do a lot of live photography, mm-hmm. and I'll license images to bands for uh, promotional use, uh, stock, et cetera. Um, and then uh, legal uh, considerations as well. Yeah. But the tip for execution here. Yeah, so keep in mind that you are not a lawyer, so don't pretend to be one. If you are the rare um, case where you are a lawyer, Call okay. us because I want, I've got some <laughs> questions. We haven't really met anyone. And that I is. want you to be on this podcast. We've got some <laughs> ideas for you. Yep. All right. So that's, uh, that's halfway. Let's take a quick break. Let's uh, share some news with our friends and then we'll come back and cover the rest of the 15 uh, photography team workshop ideas. All righty. We are back. We're halfway through um, our, our topics. And now let's just jump right back into it. Rob, what is number nine? Yeah, number nine, off-camera lighting. This has been, uh, when we did our church photography uh, survey Mm -hmm. uh, for the State of Church Photography report, uh, one of the things that a lot of people asked about was off-camera lighting. Um, You know, we don't, when we shoot in a worship setting, we absolutely don't use flash, Mm -hmm. right? Super distracting. Like, lights are down. You are super noticeable. Um, But there's a number of instances where you need to have some sort of off-camera lighting set up. Mm -hmm. If you're shooting portraits or if you're shooting um, like I literally just did a product shoot yesterday where I needed off camera lighting twice. We did apparel. Yep. So new t-shirts. And then I did, we have an advent kit coming out mm. for, uh, for uh, Christmas. And so I lit that with, uh, I had the, the uh, main light on the front yep. uh, through a soft box and then a gelled speed light in the back for some color. Yep. Um, so some topics to cover include speed lights versus strobes, yep. um, like what types of lights are out there for lighting or continuous lighting as well. Mm-hmm. Um, how speed lights specifically affect the exposure triangle? Um, because when I first started shooting with speed lights, I'm like, I am doing stuff and it's not doing what I'm thinking it's doing. <laughs> um, so how those things work together, yep. uh, light modifiers like soft boxes, like grids, like yep. gels to change color. Um, and then some like lighting setups, like mm-hmm. what's a one source lighting setup? What's a two point lighting setup? What's a three point lighting setup? Um, just you know, so the volunteers have that language and that understanding. They might not, you know, after a 90 minute workshop, be able to go out and, you know, just nail it mm-hmm. the very first time. But at least they have the ideas and the concepts and how they apply to uh, off camera lighting. So what are some uh, t- tips for ex- execution on this one? Yeah. Once again, make this workshop interactive bring gear, let them play, um, and take turns modeling and shooting. I know for me, when I was learning lighting setup for film, this was probably one of the best workshops I ever did. Um, even though I might not have remembered the exact basics of every single one, I knew, okay, I'm trying to get this fill, mm-hmm. and I remember at least the general placement mm-hmm. of the lights. And then once I started filming, I could actually figure mm-hmm. it out. So interactive is definitely the best way to go. Cool. All right. Uh, kind of following up on that one, uh, workshop idea number 10 is portrait or headshot photography. Yeah. Um, every church has staff yeah uh, at least one staff member your pastor um and every church website has some sort of staff directory <laughs> yep. uh, and so oftentimes uh church photographers will be called upon to uh, shoot portraits or headshots yep and so some topics to cover here bring in a lot of examples um talk about the difference between shooting in natural light versus bringing in artificial light mm-hmm. um talk about how um post-processing works for uh, for portrait that might be different from shooting in the auditorium. Yep. Like you don't want that crunchy, uh, high clarity look because then like every imperfection every on their face is in like their you know, <laughs> popping out. Um, and then uh, also maybe talk about tethered shooting. Yeah. So I'd, I'd kind of casually demo this in some of my workshops. I'll bring my camera and I'll just tether mm-hmm. so that they can see that it's possible. Yeah. Um, and so that introduces our photographers to a new workflow as well. But anytime I do like Mother's Day portraits at a church, I just do it tethered straight into Lightroom, set a preset on my first, you know, take a test shot, set the preset, and then every single photo that comes in just runs through that preset. Yep. And saves me 90% of my yep. editing time. Definitely. Um, so those are some topics you can cover. What about some tips for execution? Do a live shoot for this one. Bring people in looking to have portraits let people know ahead of time, hey, we're doing portraits tonight in our workshop. We'd love for you to come in, get some professional headshots. You can get some headshots. Our team gets training. This is a great way to do it. And it feels like they're actually now getting to really put what they're learning um, kind of into into play mm-hmm. rather than just theoretically, oh, this is how you would do it. Yep. Cool. Yep. And they get a headshot of it too. So exactly. Hey, Beautiful. Bonus points. Win-win. All right. Number 11. This one's inspired by our friend Dave Adamson, uh video for photographers. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, 
we have an entire podcast episode interviewing Dave and yep. talking about this topic. So go back and check that out. Dave Adamson uh, on video for photographers. Um, some topics you can cover here are kind of like, what's your essential vi video gear? Like mm -hmm. if you have a DSLR, you have almost everything you need to shoot video. You do. Um, I just did a video shoot this weekend for a, a young musician and um, I just had my, uh, I had, so I was using two cameras. I could have done it with one, mm -hmm. um, but one was on a tripod with a road mic on top pointed straight at him. And one was my, you know, carry around camera. Yep. You don't need like, you know, cinematic lighting and mm -hmm. all this stuff. Uh, you don't need boom mics and whatever. Um, as long as you have some way to capture a video yep. and some way to capture audio. Yep. Um, and man, DSLRs have come so far. Like, like if you look at this camera right here, this is the D750, which uh, like is shooting fantastic video. Yep. It's like an eight-year-old camera <laughs> yep. um, versus like you're on the Z6. The Z6 is brand new. It's built for video and yep. it's, it's even better. Yep. Uh, so the, the, the camera that you have with you probably can do some can sort do, of video. Yep. It's awesome. Um, so those are some topics to cover. Uh, talk about uh, you know the non-essential video gear. Mm -hmm. So you don't need a gimbal, but I just picked up a gimbal because I wanted to mm -hmm. learn how to shoot with yep. it and have some higher production quality. Um, and they're just yeah. awesome. Yep. You general. don't need like a monitor. You don't need all these things, but mm -hmm. these are things that could help you in your uh, video shooting as well if you want to make that plunge. Uh, talk about like frame rates and how those yep. differ. Mm -hmm. You know, what's 24 frames a second versus 30 versus 60? How do you slow-mo? Mm -hmm. And then talk about editing. You know, you don't have to go into a, a in-depth course on Premiere, um, but hey, basically here's how a non-linear editor works. Yep. Um, and here's how you can cut together some simple videos either in like iMovie or mm -hmm. um, even like I just like w as we were prepping for the summit, I was we were driving down the road. I was editing video on my phone yep. uh, that we actually used live during the, the summit. Minute. Yep. Um, so what are some tips here? Yeah. Make this one super low barrier to entry. Um, you mentioned some gear. Obviously, we have a nice setup here. However, you can do this with an iPhone. The iPhones are so awesome these days that you can almost produce an entire commercial from an iPhone and no one will really know. Yeah. We were just down in Atlanta walking around uh, one of the towns mm -hmm. one night after dinner and you were just using your iPhone. Mm -hmm. And the in-camera stabilization and mm -hmm. the colors and the slow-mo is about the same that's going to come from one of our yep. couple thousand dollar camera setups. Yeah. Um, so yeah, iPhone. Show people how you can film on your iPhone, edit on your iPhone, distribute on your mm -hmm. iPhone. This is something that can definitely be done with almost any person that's on your team. Indeed. Yeah, go check out our um, our Instagram page mm -hmm. as well, Instagram.com yep. slash church photographers. And there's a baptism video mm -hmm. I posted a couple of days ago um, that I filmed with my iPhone in 4K using Filmic Pro at like 60 frames a second. Yep. It's so sharp, man. Yeah, and, uh, like add some speed ramps on them. You add yep. a music and no one's going to know if it was you from your iPhone yeah. or if it was an entire um, video team that was in there. Yeah, like I can, like I shot baptisms on the Z6 too and I can yeah. put them back to back and they're going to look, like once you start pixel peeping, you'll see it. Exactly. But if it's just on social, yeah. never Especially know. Especially when it's on Instagram, the compressions or somebody says, no one's really going to know. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And that pains me to say. <laughs> it's, um, it's sad. All right, moving on. Uh, yep. Creative photography ideas. This is number 12. Um, what I had in mind here, like some topics to cover, are like, you know, how do you uh, introduce new elements to mm -hmm. uh, the shoot that it will add a creative bent? Yep. So that's like prisms, uh, filters, uh, lens flares, stuff like that. Um, you know, I talk about it frequently where I'll take my phone and I'll hold it up underneath my camera mm -hmm. and get that reflection going on. Um, you know, lens balls too are, yep. are popular things. Uh, what are some cool things that you can just throw in there and, 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 uh, make a image go from, oh, this is the same image I've captured a thousand times to, mm -hmm. we're going to add a creative element here. And it might not be the photojournalistic image anymore, but it's going to be cool and we can use it for something. Yep, definitely. What are some tips here? Once again, bring examples and just let them try it out. Yeah. Bring a box of prisms, filter, lens, um, balls, mirrors, whatever you want to mm -hmm. use, put them in there and just let people just rotate through them, try them out, see what's capable of doing it. Or maybe someone else has used a prism in some way that no one thought of. Mm -hmm. Great. Let them explain what, what the process was. Yeah. And you can do like double exposures in your mm -hmm. camera body and all sorts of cool stuff. Yep. Um, so creative photography ideas. Number 13, how to work as a team. Mm. Um, and so what I had in mind here was like, you know, as you, if you have a big event, now, you'll probably have multiple photographers on a shoot. Yep. And if they're all just kind of doing free for all, you're going to miss, probably miss out on a lot. But if you as a team leader um, can uh, focus their attention and say, hey, you're responsible for the back of the house. You're going to get all the wide shots. You know, you're responsible for the left side of the house. You're mm -hmm. going to get all the tight shots. And you're responsible for the right side of the house. You're going to get detailed shots. Yep. Um, you know, 
uh, assign them out and make sure that you have good coverage. That will go a long way in terms of getting a diversity of, of images uh, from your team. So teach them how to, how to work together as a mm -hmm. team, multiple photographers on one shoot, uh, different roles, different positions, different shots and angles, et cetera. And so how can we uh, prepare for execution on this one? Yeah, this is a great way to go ahead and get the teams together and let them do it on a future shoot. Um, so pick a Sunday, let the team execute what they just learned on a future shoot. Um, or you can always set up a shoot, um, a reason to provide photographers, and then you put them out there on a team and let them know, okay, this is how it's going to work. You're doing back, you're doing left, you're doing right. Um, and really just let them practice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Number 14. Uh, we kind of touched on this one already, mm -hmm. but we're going to go and just further twist that thorn on my side, uh, iPhone <laughs> photography. Um, man, up until recently, anytime somebody's like, oh, yeah, you can get DSLR quality images out of your iPhone, I'd be like, you know, no, you try. can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm the DSLR shooter. I'm the pro around here. Um, and then one day during service, I just pulled out my phone and I uh, opened up the Lightroom app so mm -hmm. I could capture raw images. And then I edited it. And then I posted it on Instagram and reluctantly uh conceded that you can get you really can. good images <laughs> out of, of an iPhone. <laughs> and I'm like two generations behind too. Yeah. Uh, tip number one for capturing iPhone images, pull out your shirt and wipe off, wipe the grease <laughs> off your lens. Um, every time I see an iPhone photo and it's just like, just blurry <laughs> smudge. I'm like, oh, you, you missed the one thing that you got to do. Yep. Clean off that lens. Uh, but here, you can cover like raw photo apps. Like mm -hmm. you can capture raw images just like you do on your DSLR. Uh, Halide is one of them that I use. Uh, Lightroom, if you're doing video like we were talking about earlier, you've got Filmic Pro, yep. which is incredible. Uh, you can talk about editing RAWs on your iPhone, so Lightroom will do it. There's a number of other apps that will do that as well. Um, how can we uh, set up for this type of shoot? Once again, let everyone play along. Tell them to bring out their phone, download the free apps that are needed, and just let them have fun with it. This is a great... Um, training to do for both photos and videos. This is just an overall iPhone. You can incorporate both into the same, um, the same training and yeah, just let them just show them what they can do with their iPhones. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then number 15, this is the one that we've got coming up next month yep. and that is throw a party. Uh, and so take a break from <laughs> all of the training and all of the, you know, here's, here, let's get down to business and let's just relax and let's mm -hmm. just hang out in fellowship. Let's recognize our volunteers for the work that they put mm -hmm. in. Let's maybe show some of the images of the year. Um, yeah, this is, this is an opportunity to just build community and yeah. celebrate what God has done in your team, uh, what you've been able to capture of what God has done in your church, and just how far you've come as, as, as volunteers and as a team. Yep, definitely. Um, so yeah, that's like that's 15 photography team workshop ideas. If you do one a month, and we do one every two months, so yeah. this is like two and a half two years, years worth. worth of content for us. So hey, if that's not worth your price of admission, we will more than be happy to refund your money on that one. Yep. Um, but 15 photography team training workshop ideas. Um, man, as we close out, like we've got so much coming up, but we, we have so much available right now too. So if you're not already part of the Church Photographer Nation, yeah. uh, go to churchphotographers.com, uh, sign up for our freebies list, and you can get access to our entire freebies vault. And there's a ton in there already. A ton of stuff in there already. We've got the How to Lead a Photography Team Workshop. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, the State of Church Photography Report. We've got Lightroom presets. We've got tutorials. Uh, we've got the, shot list. the weekend shot list, yeah. 39 different shots that you can capture on the weekend, both pre presentation format and printable format. Yep. And we'll be making a PDF of these 15. Indeed. Yeah. So churchphotographers.com slash freebies. Jump in there. If you're watching on YouTube, catch the podcast. If yep. you're listening on the podcast, catch our YouTube channel because you're going to have exclusive content on each one of those. You yep. don't get the interviews that we do uh, on our YouTube channel. You not. Um, and you don't get the tutorials that we put on the YouTube channel if you listen to the podcast. Yep. A little bit harder to do that via audio indeed it's, it's like slide the slider right here uh no the the fifth one <laughs> down. Um, and then also uh check us out on instagram yep. uh on instagram we are featuring your content so if you tag uh, church photographers on instagram uh we will repost that content if we like it and if we think it's, it's something we want to share with our with the, the community at large yep. um and then also uh we'll have some live content coming out Definitely. on our facebook page too so uh, engage in all those different areas because uh, we'll have exclusive content in each area. And then, man, the big thing, now that we're through the summit that we've got coming up that we need to tell our listeners about is it's time for us to hunker down and do some mm -hmm. work. What do we got coming up? We have courses coming out, hopefully first of the year. These are going to be in-depth courses led by you, mm -hmm. really just walking you through how to build a photography team 
and how to be a church photographer. Yeah. So not only are we going to have the how to like a, a full version of the how to lead a church photography mm-hmm. team course that's going to be for team leaders. Uh, we are going to let you outsource all of your church photography training to us. Yep. And we're going to create the DSL on fundamentals class. We're going to create the shooting in crummy light class. Yep. Um, it's all going to be there for one subscription. You can get it for your entire team. It's, absolutely going to be a no-brainer yeah um coming out hopefully mid-january yeah. so thankfully um, it's cold around here now so we can just stay in the studio yep. crunch out content yeah retreat to our cave and hibernate yep. for a little while um man the best thing that y'all can do uh, if you enjoyed this content mm-hmm. uh, if you're on youtube leave us a comment leave us a review subscribe to our channel if you're uh, listening via podcast uh, subscribe to our podcast. Like those subscriptions matter. Yep. Uh, we read some some of the uh, feedback from our reviews on our on our podcast yep. uh, during the summit, and Justin Dean was about crying. And <laughs> I was about crying because uh, the stories that we hear of how we're changing your photography teams through yep. this content it really motivates us and keeps us just going. So always love to hear from you. Uh, drop us a line by leaving a comment or podcast at churchphotographers.com. That's all we got time for. It is. And so let's uh, tell them about some friends of ours and let's catch them next time.